I was going to address some of the uh, later comments about redevelopment, but I'd also like to make a comment now if I may be recognized. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be speaking to you briefly about the tale of two police reports. And before I do that, I'd like to read you something. I know you're all familiar with this document. It's called the Constitution of the United States. I'm quoting from the 14th Amendment regarding equal protection under law. You may be familiar with those provisions. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor to deny any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the law. With that said, I'd like to briefly tell you about the tale of two police reports. Uh, back in uh, late March of 19, uh, or 2007, I met with uh, Police Sergeant Ted Steck over in the foyer entrance of the police department. I was following up on an incident that had occurred earlier in the week where we had another uh, party over at the uh, state police officer's party house, his kids, and with the neighbors complaining, the police had to be summoned. And my neighbor who was behind me was uh, treated with a parade of obscenities yelled at her and with this group of young people that were over there, the visiting guests of the state police officer. So at that time, uh, uh, Sergeant Speck said, you know, well, it didn't show up to mediation and we couldn't do this and that. So why don't you make a citizen's arrest? I said, oh, I, I can do that, right? He goes, so any citizen can make a citizen's arrest. I said, fine. Well, it didn't take too long. On the evening of uh, April the 2nd, 2007, about a week later, we had an incident where a, a gentleman, <coughs> if you want to call him that, pulled up in front of my house after 10 o'clock at night and playing the subwoofer with a boom, 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 waking up my children. So I said, well, here's the opportunity. On the advice of the Sassoon Police Department, I went outside and informed him he was under citizen's arrest. I immediately called the dispatcher. I had that number memorized, 421-7373. And the uh, dispatcher immediately said, sure, we'll dispatch officers immediately. And I warned the subject not to leave. So the police showed up. Uh, my record showed it was a Martin, uh, 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 officer, Mark Tenez, and another officer. And as they uh, talked to this individual, I found it very strange. Their interface with him was just uh, completely lacking in rationality. They wouldn't make him get out of the car. They had him roll down his window a quarter of an inch so he could slip his driver's license out. Meanwhile, the, uh, the son and daughter and the wife of the state police officer came out and started protesting all of this. So the officers ended up writing him a short little uh, citation and then slipping it back in through the window, nice and neat. And they kind of lambasted me, you know, this is kind of dangerous what you're doing. Well, you know, you should have, you know, second thoughts. I reminded them, you know, this is what you told me to do. So, uh, recently, I went out and I uh, pulled the records on this individual. This is not good. This is, the, this is the part that has me quaking in my boots now. This is what I found on this individual. Two pages. This is a huge rap sheet, and I went and I looked specifically. And this guy... I need you to bring it to a Yes, I certainly will, ma'am. Thank you very much. This guy who's visiting a state police officer's family is a convicted drug felon, okay? We're not talking, you know, smoking some weed behind no. This guy was caught with crack cocaine. He also had violent offenses, okay? Domestic battery, terrorist threats. Can I ask you a question? What is this guy doing hanging out with the family of a state police officer? Why did it take three Ginn years to get this resolved? Mr. Ginn, I'm going to have to ask you it down. You're talking to us to start off with. And second off, what time is up? Ma'am, I requested five minutes. I only showed three. I've got I've got two minutes remaining. Uh, now, I'm sorry, I didn't I, I, I didn't uh, give you the five minutes. I'm so sorry. Well, that brings us to the, the second incident in question. We've seen how the police resolved that first one. Okay, I also know that this individual, this uh, drug felon who's hanging out down there, went on to cre uh, commit other drug uh, crimes, as shown here, by the way, okay? So this is what I have going on in my neighborhood with no remedy, resolution, relief, or anything. Thank you so much. Well, I've got one other thing. I, I want to show you the disparity and the I'm difference in the treatment between the and a drug felon in your neighborhood that's being harbored by a state police officer's family. Mr. Gibbons, I'm sorry, you have the same amount of time everybody else has been given. Well, and I'd like to, I'd like to finish my... Uh, I'm going to have to ask you to please sit down, Mr. Gibbons. 
Ma'am, I was not treated in the same way as this drug fellow. This oh, drug fellow showed so every sorry. courtesy. I'm and now you're not showing me a courtesy. Thank you. Please sit. Uh, there's nothing to discuss, sir. Uh, comments, uh, appreciate the self modeling. Uh, I think that when you have gross misconduct, the city has no choice but to act. Uh, you know, for instance, I've got a guy who lives on my street, he's got, you know, four or five junk cars, and he's out there spray painting them and, you know, doing body work on them, and there's laws about that stuff, but you know something? I think I've learned my lesson. I tried to work with the city and the police department. It doesn't work. You're, you know, it's just subjectiveness and you know, subjective interpretation of laws. And I'm easy. If the grass is a foot high, I don't care. But when it gets up to the top of the roof, folks, I think it's time to act. Okay? You know, it's all took three years for the city to come down on a property owner to get them to, to mow and trim the yard. You know, that's that's a little bit excessive. If the grass is only six inches or a foot high, heck, I'm not going to complain about that. You know, I'm easy, but uh, you do have to enact some laws. So can we find some median ground here that if somebody is on an industrial level polluting that we can go after them, but if it's just a, uh, you know, lawn clippings in the, in the gutter or something, we can show some kind of uh, restraint, you know, keep things in perspective, so to speak. You know? that's, all, that's all I'm saying. But the other thing is, is that uh, we have all these laws on the books now regarding code enforcement. I don't see much progress there. You know, I you know, I just told you one property down there, it's got a huge bunch of detritus construction debris laying, you know, in the front yard. I mean they could have staged that stuff out of there, you know, but they don't. It's just gonna pile up there, it's gonna be there for a while, I know it is. You know, nobody's gonna go down there and tell I mean it's a big eyesore. I mean, you know, it's huge. So just keeping things in perspective, folks, that's all. Thank you. Lane. I'd like to agree with uh, Mr. Boyan. I also do believe that you spent enough money on the downtown district where three of you either live or own a business or both. Uh, we have uh, very, very poor services in the way of police protection where I live on my street. And I notice a lot of torn up roads uh, throughout the city. I'm sure you're going to address that. But it seems to me that the end result, the bottom line here is what are you trying to attract to the city, okay? I don't see young urban professionals or upscale people coming in here. What I see is a lot of, uh, of bums and, and drunks and people hanging out on the street down here. Uh, you know, what is the point? You know, what are you bringing into the city? What are you creating, fostering, attracting, and subsidizing down here? It doesn't look good. You know, I see a lot of code enforcement problems that get neglected. We pay a lot of money and taxes for code enforcement, but the results are, are dismal. Go look at the, uh, the pile of construction debris and detritus outside of 713 uh, Capistrano, you know? But, and guys say that you're actually controlling? Go look at it. I mean, it's rich, it's right in your face. I saw a cop right out there pulling the guy over yesterday, and you know, it's right in his face. I, I almost took a picture of it. It would have been a great picture. Because it illustrates the problem. The lack of services, while all the resources are getting directed into developing, redeveloping the downtown area. But you're not attracting the right people. And so consequently, you're going to lose all your homeowners, your business people, your families, are going to leave. They don't want it. You know, is the Salvation Army progress, is that supposed to be upscale or something? I, I don't think so. Thank you.